Packer. How cute is that? That they are like, they always like lick each other and and I asked the vet, I was like, what's that about? And it's like, that's their way to be like compassionate towards each other. Isn't that so sweet? Look at my little babies, my little babies. I'm making videos and I'm getting ready to leave here to go to meet Alex for a coffee date. And then we're going to uh, go to a marriage counseling session. So we're gonna meet for a little bit before. I like what happened to this hair up here. I don't know, do you see that hair? <laughs> so it reminds me of when I was a little kid. Anyway, I'm uploading my video right now. I'm like, it says it's gonna take 30 minutes and I do not have 30 minutes to wait. So I'm like, please do not take 30 minutes, 31 minutes now. I'm like, please do not take 30 minutes. I do not have that much time. Okay, so I'm gonna get off here and film the rest of my videos, but I just wanted to say hi. And I really just wanted to film that to record it because it was so sweet. Look at little Boo Radley and Tucker. Hi guys. Hello. How are we? Tucker. Hey little Tucker. Put your ears up, Tucker. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's he used to do that when he was a baby. Hi, PB. Hi, PB. How are you, PB? Are you over there answering the drama phone, peeps? You are. <laughs> Answer it. Ding a ling a ling. Shim a ling a ling a ling. <laughs> okay, well, my goal to vlog throughout the day did not happen. It is three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning. Where are you gonna be? Outside on the corner. <laughs> when I worked in treatment, when I first started uh, there, I was a tech, and one of my responsibilities was taking kids to 12-step meetings. When we would come back, there would be this like late-night radio show in Indianapolis, and they would play that song, five o'clock in the morning, where you gonna be outside on the corner? And then it would go into the singing and go, to the north, to the south, to the east and the west. We're the ones, they're always the best, or something like that. All the kids would sing it in the car. Oh, those were good days. I was just listening to this video about uh, S S Booktober or something like that. There's like two major like Halloween readathons in October, and that Spooktober is one of them. Not Spooktober. It's like S Booktober, and um, they have like all these different challenges and stuff they do. I may do that. I didn't do it last year. And then the other one is. Um, Books and Lala hosts Spookathon from the 16th to the 24th, and I do that one, and I love it. And then I was thinking about wanting to do videos of, like, scary books that my mom used to read me when I was a little kid, because my mom has this, had this really big book of, like, um, James Wickham Riley. Do you guys know the poet James Wickham Riley? He's actually from Indianapolis. But he would, he played, uh, he played, he wrote the, po the poem Little Orphan Annie, and um, not like Annie the Musical, but Little Orphan, it's like Orphan with a T, Annie, and my mom used to read it to me, and I would get so scared when she would read it to me, and it would be like, Little Orphan Annie comes to our house to play, and washes the soup, cup, cups and saucers, and puts the plates away, and after, do, 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 and then, better watch out, or oh, spooks will get you, or something like that, I don't know, but my mom used to, like, read that to me, and it was, like, so scary late at night, I was so scared of it, and the goblins will get you if you don't watch out, do you ever, did you guys ever remember that, the goblins? I love being spooked out on Halloween. I love October. It's like my favorite month of the entire year. I love everything about it. I love the horror movies. I watch like a horror movie every day. I always have it in the background. I have all of these melts. I keep on buying more and more of those melts. I like was having Alex smell them today. We had such, Alex and I had such a great night tonight together. Um, so I filmed earlier. But anyway, I had him smell those melts tonight. He's like, he doesn't love them. And I said, well, I want to get like another one of these candle melt things. He's kind of looked at me and I go, I want to get another one of these candle melt things, but for our bedroom. And I want to get like lemon and fresh linen scents for up there. Cause he loves those kind of scents. And he was like, okay. And I was like, but your thing up there is like full of jewelry. That's dusty. Like, can you clean it off? He's like, yeah, we can clean it off. Then you can use that. I said, okay, that'd be cool. So anyway, um, 
because I noticed when I was at Meyer last night, they're $15 for these metal ones that I like. But they were on sale, and I was like, oh, this would be great, because then I could get another one, and they were on sale for like $9.99. I mean, that's really good, because they look like little cute lamps, and I've really noticed the one in the kitchen. I really like, like how it looks like at night. Like, I don't know, it's just like, I like being able to go into the kitchen and get a cup of coffee, or like tonight while we were watching American Horror Story, I had these K-Cups of Starbucks salted caramel hot chocolate, which is, I wouldn't say is the best in the world. I wouldn't say it's the worst, but I think I kind of like the idea of hot chocolate more than I really like drinking hot chocolate, if that makes sense. I don't know. I love apple cider, though, but, and I love that sassafras tea, too. I'm kind of all over the place. So what happened was, well, I'll tell you about what we did tonight, but, like, I, we came home and we watched Project Runway. Okay, so, um, Alex texted me and he was like, um, we're reading this book for marriage counselor and it's called Hold Me Tighter and it's like different forms of intimacy. So we're like going through these different forms. Here's my sheet right now that our counselor gave us tonight because I asked him, I said, you know, you keep on talking about all these different forms of intimacy. I was like, can you like, can we go through each of them and you can give us examples? And so we did, but he had assigned us this book to read. And if you're a couple and you know, it says at the beginning of the book that it's all for, like, couples that are, like... It's interesting in her intro, she talks about that couples that seek counseling when they're not, like, like on the verge of divorce, like, couples counseling can, like, totally make your relationship, like, the best thing ever. And she gets all these messages from people that are, like, they take her workshop and stuff. And she's Sue Johnson. She's been around forever. And she was like, you know, I love when I get to work with couples that really just want to enhance their marriage, which is the reason why Alex and I went. And, um, so he assigned us this book called Hold Me Tighter. And it's like ways to be like closer and more like intimate and not, and I think we think of intimacy in different ways. Like, I think when we use that word, like even in my own practice back in the day, I would think of like emotional or physical intimacy. And he had given us based out of this book, these like 10 different kinds of intimacy and there's sexual intimacy, which is sharing uh, passion and physical pleasure, right? which I think we all know what that is, right? And uh, then there's emotional intimacy, which is being turned to each other's wavelength, being tuned into each other's wavelength. And that's like, you know, when whatever your partner is going through emotionally, you meet them where they're at. And so like, um, like, Alex is not a super emotional person, and I'm too emotional. I, or not too emotional, but I'm overly emotional. And so, we're kind of, like, trying to meet each other halfway, and, like... I'm always, like, very protective of, like, people in my vlog, like, what I want to share. But I don't think that Alex would care. His mom had to put his... Had to put their cat to sleep today. And, um, the cat had been very, very sick for a long time. And it was actually his brother's cat. And, um... So, like, Alex texted me, and he was like, Mom had to put the cat to, had to have the cat put to sleep today, and I was like, oh, my God, is she okay? And, like, I immediately, like, didn't even think, like, to ask him, you know? And then, like, he was like, yeah, he was like, I kind of teared up when she told me, and he was like, I got really upset, and then I started thinking about pee-pee and how pee -pee's getting older, and I was like, well, babe, are you okay? And, and it's so interesting what is happening as a result of all this is like he's emotionally totally opening up to me and I think he's understanding my level of emotional need through it. So we're really kind of starting to speak the same emotional language, which is awesome. And then there's intellectual intimacy, which is closeness in the world of ideas. And that's where you like have like discussion. Like we went through each of these tonight. It was really cool. And um, came up with like suggestions and ideas for it. And that's like where you like sit down at dinner and you don't just, how was your day? It was good, blah, 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 whatever. But you discuss like ideas, like political ideas or books that you're reading or, you know, like ideologies about different things in the world, you know, and personal belief systems. And, um, and you open yourself up to that and you're, you're, you remain teachable to each other and you, you don't just shut that person. Oh no, you're wrong. And you listen to that. Right. Because then you're opening, it's like with every single one of these, 
you're opening these attachments and intimacies closer to each other. And one of the things that she describes in her book is that we want to think of couples more in the romantic sense when couples are really more like a parent-child attachments. And so instead of it being like these, I love that she said this, that for years the whole idea of healthy marriages was the idea of negotiables and non-negotiables. Okay, so nego negotiables are things like, are we going to live here or are we going to move to, you know, Texas? And, like, maybe that's an issue that, like, nobody really cares about. It's like it can be negotiated, right? But a non-negotiable would be, like, I want children, she doesn't want children. Does that make sense? Like, a lot of couples used to come with me and say, like, this is a non-negotiable. Like, I want children, she doesn't. So how are we going to move forward? And she was saying in her book that she doesn't believe that, like, love, romantic love is about negotiables and non-negotiables. She thinks that's total bullshit, that what she really thinks is it's about, um attachments with the other person and that the more emotional attack the more intimate attachments you can have with that person the deeper your relationship grows on each level and so the more like intimacy buttons that you can push so if you're having a sexual intimacy if you're having an emotional intimacy if you're having an intellectual intimacy you're like tapped into this person on so many levels that you're like growing not enmeshed together but like we're and not depending on each other but you're really intimate with this person on a very very deep level and then your relationship is just fuller and like and you know so anyway um and then aesthetic intimacy, which is sharing expressions of beauty. And Alex and I were talking about that, like um, how I like, like I love to do this dance kaleidoscope thing that he opened me up to. And we were talking about like different forms of artwork. And Alex started, like he got very emotional. He started crying in the session, and he started talking about how we love going to ultra music festival together. And you know, it's like the way that we express our like love for beauty through music. And we both love music, and we get very excited talking about music together. And, um, and then there's creative intimacy, which is sharing acts of creating together. And we talked about in there how we used to like, we started our website together, rant, R-A-A-N-N-T.com. If you guys don't know, I, don't, I haven't talked a lot about this on here, but Alex and I own a website together and we started it nine, eight years ago. It'll be nine years ago next summer. And it started off as just this local blog that we did to be fun. And then it ended up being where we were on the radio show, we were on TV, and um, we ended up interviewing all kinds of celebrities from cast of American Horror Story to the author of the Sookie Stockhouse novels to Jackie Collins to all kinds of people. And now it's, t it's basically just an electronic dance music um, website because Alex loves that and he's basically in charge of it because I'm doing YouTube and writing my books and so instead of us working together on it like we've kind of like split it apart and he does it now and I do my thing and there were times though that we used to argue a lot about like what would go on there I mean it's it was kind of a very serious part of our life I mean it was we never really made a lot of money off of it but we were so passionate about doing it together and we both felt so strongly about what should go on it and what shouldn't. And um, at the same time, it was like, it allowed us a lot of opportunities to go to a lot of like events. And I mean, the Super Bowl came to Indianapolis because of this website alone was so well known that like we got into every party. It was very cool. We got to meet a lot of celebrities and it was just really, really fun. And we worked our asses off on this website together, but we were talking about like, okay, so since we're on different page, you know, wavelengths at this point, like what are creative things that we could do together now that, um, you know, like, since the website isn't, like, something that we're doing together, we both agreed that, like, us making our house the way that we want it to be, and what, like, how could we, you know, start creatively working on the house, and it was funny, because we were watching TV, and Alex was like, which, we agreed on that tonight, and he was like, which room do you want to start on, and I was like, the downstairs bathroom, and he goes, okay, let's start on that right away, and I said, oh, and buy a dryer, <laughs> but that's not, like, a creative outlet, but... It's the whole idea of creating things together, you know, whether that's like a garden or cooking meals together or doing something artistically like painting together or whatever it is, you know, put music together. Or, you know, and I think like, I was thinking about this when we were having our session and it's like, my mom and I used to sit around my kitchen 
and like in our kitchen and we would like sing songs together right and if you think back in the day like with families you know families like of prairie times and stuff and even english families back in the day and wherever you know um i mean i'm only thinking of one instance but wherever in the world your family comes from music was a huge part of that you know sitting around and playing instruments together or singing songs or you know things like that or playing games together and those are all creative endeavors so then the next one was re recreational intimacy relaxing and experiences of fun and play and that was another instance where Alex talked about ultra and so we were kind of like identifying some things that we like to do in there and then work intimacy closeness of sharing common tasks that's actually an area of intimacy that Alex and I are very good at, like sharing things around the house. Like, it's kind of an equal partnership with that. Like, we don't ever, like, I've seen so many couples through the years when I was in my private practice that, like, would argue over, like, dishes or, like, the trash or, like, the pets or the children. And it's like, we never, like, that's never an issue for us. Like, we're both very, we both are very, like, much invested in the overall taking care of, you know, business. And then there is a crisis intimacy, which is closeness and coping with problems and pain. And it was interesting because we were talking about that in relationship to, like, you know, people in my family dying or people in his family being sick or whatever. And, you know... I think that's an issue, another thing where we're really positively, intimately aligned, you know? And I think that you have to know where your strengths and your weaknesses are. And then conflict, in, conflict, intimacy, facing and struggling with difficulties. And, um, you know, we're very different on that level. Like, I'm someone that kind of almost goes into panic mode. I know that you would think that would be hard to believe, probably. But, like, if it's not about me, if it's somebody else's stuff, like, I'm very good with it. But when it involves me, I get very, very nervous, and I kind of go into panic mode a little bit. And Alex is not that person at all. Like, he's like, okay, what do we need to do? Like, what's one, two, and three? Let's get to it, you know? And one of the things that we were talking tonight, this was so interesting, was we were talking about, like, how Alex and I achieve our dreams. And, um, like, Alex was saying that, you know, like, the way that he achieves his dream is that he sees a dream up here, and then he breaks it down to the very beginning of where he needs to go to get to that dream, and then he does those things in order, right, to get there. Whereas, for me, I'm just such a dreamer that I'm like, do this, do that, do that, and, like, I think of the end result and just run for it, and it's like, so, like, we think artistically and dream-wise in two completely different ways, which I thought it was interesting, and Alex brought that up, and I was like, God, that's so true, you know, like, we see things in two completely different ways of how we achieve our dreams, and then commitment intimacy, mutually derived from common self-interest, um, and we talked a lot about that. I've never seen so many costumes out in my entire life. And then um, spiritual intimacy, unity shared in religious expression, which were completely, like, we don't share that at all. But I think there's a mutual, ex like, a mutual respect. Like, I don't force my beliefs on Alex, and he respects my beliefs. And what I mean by that is that Alex literally has no beliefs whatsoever, um, any spiritual beliefs. And I live my life spiritually. And so... I very much believe that we're humans having a spiritual experience or spirit, spiritual beings having a human experience. And, uh, he doesn't believe that at all, which is interesting because every person I've been in a long-term relationship with is, does not consider themselves a spiritual person. And Alex probably, more so than the rest. And he bases it a lot on some things that have happened in his life. And I think there's just a mutual respect for our equal belief systems on that, you know, that like we don't force on the other person what they should or shouldn't believe. Um, and then communion, intimacy, the mutual understanding of affirmation. And, you know, that was really interesting when you were talking about that. Like, that's one of the things that has really changed in our relationship since we've been going to counseling is that um, the way that we validate one another, I think, has really, like, heightened and changed. I don't know. Like, tonight we left, and, like, the counselor just, like, looked at us at the end, like, with kind of some, like, pride, I think. Like... love us as a couple. Like, we're such a cool couple, you know? And I was really resistant to going to counseling. You know, Alex really wanted to do it. And part of the reason why was 
because I've been drinking this coffee all day because unlike other couples, our lives are so busy that when we do get to spend time together, we want to spend quality intimate time together. And Alex was like, you know, I'm afraid that over time we're going to kind of just go like live com two completely independent lives. And so like, this is really good for us because what we were talking about tonight is okay. So if we do something together three nights a week, or three days a week, let's spend that time in the deepest quality, intimate time that we possibly can. And like, we're doing that, you know? And it was like, Alex had texted me, we we're supposed to read this chapter of this book. And so Alex texted me, I'm like running like my, round with a chicken with its head cut off today, you know? And Alex texted me and he was like, hey, do you wanna meet at Starbucks? Like, you know, an hour and a half before our appointment for a little coffee date. And um, we can like each read the chapter, we can read it out loud. And I was like, okay, that'd be fun. And so we, I went over there and we did that. And um, we read the chapter and we kind of talked about it for a little bit before we went to the appointment. And it was just kind of nice. It was, I took a shower, I looked cute, he looked sexy, you know, it was, it was fun, it was romantic. And you know, then afterwards we both, he goes, I need to go get, he's gonna make stuff for a salad. And he's like, I'm gonna go to the grocery store. And I was like, well, I'm gonna go to the grocery store. And I said, okay, well, I'll see you there. And we were both there. And I kind of like teased him at the grocery store. Like I had never like ran into him and never knew, had seen him before, you know? And so then we went home and we both cooked our dinner separately. Cause we eat, he ate this big chicken salad. And I of course was eating like my hummus and that kind of stuff. Cause I'm back on my diet today. And um, then we watched an episode of Project Runway, and then we watched American Horror Story, and then we laid in bed and talked for a little bit. And it was just such a nice night. You know, it's like I felt so connected to my husband. Um, almost in a way that I didn't even know was possible. And I don't know how to explain this. I don't know. Just don't ever give up hope. You know, like... I'm not saying that, like, had we never ended up in counseling, that eventually things would have, like, ended up in divorce for us, because I don't believe that. But I don't believe that our relationship would be where it is today, you know? Like, I was really resistant to going to counseling, because I had this idea, this stigma, that couples that go to counseling are couples that have issues. And... That was as a counselor, even though I knew that was shit because I got couples all the time. Like, okay, one of the, I have to be honest, like of all the couples that I used to see that were couples, 60 per, or that for couples counseling, like 60 to 70% of the couples that I saw were couples that were getting married that just wanted to come to counseling to get some stuff sorted out before they got married. How healthy is that? Like that is super, super healthy, right? And Alex had been asking for like over a year for us to go. And he was like, I think it would just improve our, our communication. I, I think it would help us be more intimate. And I'd be like, oh, okay, well, if you find somebody, but like, I really wouldn't push because I didn't really want to go. And then finally, you know, he was like, this is something I really want to do. This is important to me. And I was like, okay. So we went and I really went with the intention of going like one time and saying like, well, that was great. Like, but do you really think that we need to go? And we've been going like every week since March or April. And I cannot even begin to tell you like, I told my counselor last week, because every other week we go individually. And, like, with him individually, I'm working on a lot of 12-step stuff. Um, because I'm redoing my four-step. Four-step is part of your 12-step. You make a searching and fearless moral inventory of your lives. And so I'm going through a lot of issues, like grieving my mother and, uh, you know, relationships with family members and things like that. And I'm discussing a lot of that with my counselor. Things that don't have anything to do with Alex, but probably play a huge part in our relationship without me knowing it. That's what we call baggage, but we don't want to acknowledge. You know what I mean? And that's really helped too. And, um, because then I'll talk to Alex about those things and he'll talk to me about the things that he's working on. And I'm just so happy that we went. And, you know, one of the reasons why I talk so openly about it on here is because... I think a lot of people wait until it's too late. I think with my ex and I, well, we were just in a really unhealthy relationship anyway for a lot of different reasons, but I think had we gone to counseling a couple years before, I don't know that it would have ended up the way that it did, you know? Like, 
I don't know. I just, I can't sing the praises of counseling enough. But I also think it has to do with who you find as a counselor. I think it was a total God thing that we found this guy. Um, I mean, he's this 34-year-old, <laughs> very sharply dressed, straight guy with two little kids that is very calm and like can settle my ass down that quick because you know I get like ah, 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 you know and he's just so good for both of us and <clears throat> I don't know I think it's finding the right person and like he doesn't force anything on us but he also validates the progress that we've made but will also point out the areas of things that he thinks that like he said tonight, if he said it once, he said it more than once because we kind of dragged our feet on this book a little bit. And he was like, I think that would be a really good reason to keep reading the book. But he would say it in kind of a sarcastic way a little bit, like read the fucking book. You know what I mean? Like, because we talked a lot about like what we were learning from this book tonight. <clears throat> um, I don't know. I think you have to know like when it's too far gone. I think like, you know, if I was in a relationship where I thought... Like, I'm ready to get out. I don't know that I could ever not... <clears throat> I don't know that I could walk away without giving it a try. But... If I had known... I, I want you guys out there that have relationships that are just status quo, that are just okay. But you wish for something more. Like, you see these couples and you think, like... God, they're so cool. They're so passionate towards each other. Because even our friends are noticing it with Alex and I now. They're like, you guys are like honeymooners and stuff. It's like crazy. And <clears throat> if you are in the relationship that there's not like super deep problems, but like you wish for something more, you just wish for that lot, that fire to be lit again. And you know your partner would be willing to go to counseling, go do it. Like if you can afford it, try it, you know? And if you can't afford it, try to find some low income counseling in your area. It has made such a huge difference in our life. Um, you know, I look at Alex in a completely different way now. I mean, I've always loved my husband, but like, I wake up every morning and I'm like, I am so in love with this man, you know? And um, there is a skunk out there, I can smell it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just very happy with it. And tonight was like a perfect night with my husband. We had such a great time together tonight. Just doing nothing. Just hanging around the house, you know? Eating dinner and watching TV shows. But we like talked and... I don't know. It was just good. It was nice. I want to be best friends with my husband. But I also want to be intimate with him, you know? I also want... I want my best friend... I want him to be my best friend on some level, but like I also have Tanya and he has his friend Sarah. Like I don't want to be best friends with him like that. Like I want to be passionate with my husband. I want to be intimate on a level that I can only be intimate with with that person that I trust <clears throat> with every aspect of my body, you know? With every aspect of my mind, with every aspect of my spirit and my emotions. Um, and I think that truly is what marriage commitment and relationships are about. So... That's been my day. And then, after American Horror Story, um, I went outside to read, and I got so tired. I was like, because last night, you guys, I read three books. I finished three books yesterday. You can go to my BookTube channel and see me talk all about them. But So, I have four books I want to finish before October 1st, so that I'm completely caught up. And um, I was like sitting outside and I got so tired I was like I'm just gonna lay down for a half an hour well that was at 11 o'clock 11 15 and I woke up and it was like uh 2 25 or something and I was like well you just slept through the whole night <laughs> and I was like oh my god I need to get up I wanted to listen to a little bit of my audiobook I'm not loving this audiobook that I'm listening to it's a little mm, it's a little different I don't love it. I wanted to listen to something a little bit more fun, a little bit light, more lighthearted, but I guess it's what October's for because I'm listening to all scary stuff. So, I've almost spoken for 20, 28 minutes. Can you believe that in a row? About marriage counseling. See, that's why you need to go because I think it's so fantastic, right? And 
tomorrow and Thursday I'm completely off and I'm so happy. I'm gonna sit outside and read and I'm just gonna run around. I'm gonna go to the library. I'm gonna go buy more of those melts at my favorite place. <laughs> I know, I need to like cool it. I'm like addicted to buying melts. It's getting to be a little ridic ridiculous. Alex was like, I was showing him my drawer of melts tonight. I was so proud of it. <laughs> He goes, do you think you have enough? And he was like, they all smell the same. They all smell like pumpkins. And I was like, Alex, they don't all smell like pumpkins. He was like, they kind of all smell like pumpkins. I go, well, I just love fall, you know? Like, he goes, I can't stand that smell. But if it makes you happy, he goes, if it makes you happy. He goes, I don't mind the one right now. What is it? And I said, apple sangria. <laughs> They're all named the cheesy. They, it should just be called apple, but it's apple sangria. But it straight up smelled like apple cider in my house. And I loved it. So $1.99 at Meyer. All right, you guys, I'm gonna end this now and listen to a little bit of my audiobook before I go to bed. It's been a wonderful day. I've had a great week so far. I love you guys, and um, I will talk to you later. Bye.